Hi, welcome to another video. This video is one that I had hoped would be more positive, but you know, it is the way it is. So as the title says, this is a bit of a rant, but also not too much. I know that sometimes I do rant videos where I kind of go off on books or shows or whatever, but this one really is gonna be more of, I'm, I'm done with this author and it's Babel by R.F. Kuang. So R.F. Kuang is the same author who wrote the Poppy War trilogy and she came out with Babel and like, I don't know if it was around the end of 2022. I don't know. It came out in 2022 and my goodness, so much hype around this book. So many people talking about how they're going to read it. And then the moment it was published, everyone was picking it up and well, not everyone, but a lot of people were picking it up. And then the reviews came out and I don't think I saw a whole lot where people were saying that they didn't like this book, that they were disappointed in it. A lot of people really love this book. And I'm going to start off by saying I can see why they would. It's not a bad book. It fulfills what it aims to do. So Babel is a, in my opinion, much more of a historical fiction than it is a fantasy, even though I know that if you look at it on like Goodreads or Storygraph, it'll probably be listed under fantasy. Um, but yes, much more of a historical fiction in my opinion, with like slight magical realism is what I'd go for, not fantasy, because this is set in like the 1800s, um, 1836, exactly, apparently, although time progresses through it. But 1836, you're following a young boy named Robin who is from China, and he is, uh, well, it literally starts off with his mother dying, his whole family dying of a plague of the, I was going to say the bubonic plague, but that's not it. It was like cholera or something. And he's taken in by a professor, Oxford professor, who's a translator and interpreter. And he takes in Robin and takes him to England. And from there, you know, you just kind of follow Robin in being the outsider kid, the kid who was taken in by a man who won't really adopt him and doesn't seem to really care for him, just kind of using him for Robin's ability to speak English. And um, I think it was Cantonese is what he could speak uh, better than Mandarin, but because he is from China, he also knows Mandarin. Point is that it becomes pretty clear that the professor is just using Robin to fulfill a quota that is needed at in Babel, which Babel is the school branch in Oxford, in Oxford that does translations and interpretations interpretations and it's particularly important in this book in this the world that has been built around our reality in this book which is that there is actually a component a magical component called silver it's just silver bars and if you have a specific combination of languages on those silver bars it can essentially act as magic. That's the best description I can really give because honestly it is quite complex and I thought it was super interesting. But why did this book not work for me? Why am I saying that it's a, a very good book but I only gave it two stars? Well, honestly, it's because sometimes some books work for people and sometimes some books don't work for people and that's it. I can recognize that Babel is a, it's a masterfully crafted book. Clearly R.F. Kuang knows a lot about her history and so much so that she's able to tweak things and manipulate them into altering it into a kind of fantastical version of our history, which is amazing being able to do that. And it was very believable. I did feel like I could see this reality slash fantasized reality that she created. But there were, huh, there was a conversation that I had with Lorena on Instagram, who I follow and often speak with and share my thoughts about when I'm reading. And she, I told her, I was like, I don't know what it is, but I, I'm not enjoying myself. I can recognize that this is a good book. It's well written. It's well crafted, but I'm not enjoying it. And she pointed something out that I think really helped me understand why I didn't like this book. And it's that RF Kuang, in her hierarchy of important elements to her books, it goes, number one is thematic, number two is characters, and number three is plot. And that's where I realized I was like, oh, that's probably why I don't really like this book, is that I'm primarily a plot reader. I mean, obviously all elements to a story are important and will always make a story better if you have all of it, right? But I love stories. 
I need there to be a plot that I am invested in. And you know, it always helps if I have some characters that are enjoyable. But the themes actually are pretty unimportant to me. I don't care what the theme is, and I don't care how heavily you want to show it. I need the story, the plot to make sense, to be interesting, to just move and for things to happen. Babel has very little that happens. And by this I mean, let me give a little, it's not spoilers, but let me give a, a kind of example. In Babel, because the importance of languages is so important in this book, it will literally go like explanations of languages and history and colonization and racism for like a full chapter. And then you'll get like maybe a few paragraphs of something happening of something progressing the story. And I guess an example of that would be like, uh, so Robin is studying languages, he's learning history, he's learning the difference between, you know, certain, what is it, Latin and Greek and English and the different words that he can use, say, how they translate, blah, blah, blah. It'll go on and on and on and on about that. And then it's the professor, I think his name was Lovell. Uh, the professor Lovell, I think he might be my dad. And we're back to the languages again. That's like, it was literally just languages, languages, languages. Oh, is this man my father? Oh, we're not going to talk about that right now. Languages, 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 language. I'm like, oh, geez, I can't, I can't do that. I can't keep reading something like that because then at that point, I'm like, I could have just picked up a history book or a linguistics book if that was what I wanted to read. So that's my primary qualm with the book. I had a few people tell me that um, I would probably be very interested in the book because, because of the language aspect. And I speak three languages. I speak English, French, and Portuguese, and I'm decent with Spanish as well. Point is that I am bilingual, trilingual. So this book, you know, has that theme. And it was even something that I was interested in. But I guess that there was so much focus on language that I, at a certain point, I was like, maybe this book is actually not that great for people who speak multiple languages because, well, I don't know, maybe it differs because I went to school for a year as a translator and interpreter. That's what I thought I wanted to do for a while and I was so bored. I hated it. I hated everything about studying languages because the truth is that when I was learning to speak my three languages, I was just born speaking three languages. I didn't learn how to conjugate or formulate specific sentences or find the perfect word to translate. So yeah, I guess maybe because of my history with that, a lot of what was said in the book, I kind of already knew and I didn't like it. And then the other part too is, I know a lot of people are gonna say, you know, well, the big theme here is colonization and the, the, the atrocities that are committed in history of manipulating people and comparing yourself to them and saying that they're barbaric because they're not the same. Honey, that's, yes, that's an unfortunate, and that's probably the most terrible part of human history is this capacity to feel like a god above other people simply because of a difference in language and culture and skin color. But again, I can, I can read a history book on that, and I have. I've read a lot of history books on it. I also want to add that there are a lot of other fantasy books that delve into the topic of colonization and racism that I have enjoyed far more than I have Babel, and that it's not just history books either. It's just the plot for Babel didn't work for me. So yeah, I guess maybe this book just was not the right book for me because I already have a lot of knowledge on this stuff and I've already read a lot of it in a context of a nonfiction history book or linguistics book. So when I read my fantasy, I guess I want it to be a little more separate or different, new, right? So maybe, maybe what I would have preferred if in Babel, what I would have liked more in Babel is if it had focused on, honestly, probably if it had focused more on the rebellion, because there is a, like a little rebellion thing going on, but you really don't get any of it. Like you get hints of, oh, Robin is helping. And then, oh, Robin finds out his friends are helping. And I'm like, okay, but you get 300 pages in and it's still like nothing. You get told that he's helping them, but you never see it very much. So yeah. I'm aware that it comes up later in the book and by the end, of course, but it just wasn't built up enough for me to care by then. And I know that for other people, the ending was a lot more wow than it was for me. I don't know. 
Well, no, I do know. I know that this book was just not for me and I'm very happy that other people have enjoyed it. And if this is how people are getting more knowledge on the history of the world, like colonization and also languages and how important they are to a person's identity, then that's wonderful. And I'm so happy that this book has provided that for people and that RF Kuang is the, the, the doorway to human history in a fantasy setting and to these themes that are, they're big and they're important to know about. But I, I already, I already know. <laughs> Not to be that person who's like, oh, I'm already knowledgeable. You don't need to tell me. It's just that what is in that book, I, I do. I read a lot about that stuff. I took a whole course um, when I was in college of um, Asian art, because I have a degree in art history, which also is a reason why I have read a lot of history books too, is that art history is literally just history with pictures um, and what they meant at that time. And when I, I remember my Asian art history class, I loved it. I loved it a lot because it was, you know, it's a history that I, didn't know very much about because in high school and all that you learn about your own country's history primarily and yeah I don't know I feel like maybe maybe this I, I shouldn't have picked it up because now I feel bad because so many people love it so much and I'm sitting over here like eh. <laughs> again I do want to emphasize that it is not a bad book it is a very good book if what you're looking for is a very thematic read a book that focuses a lot on the importance of cultures and languages and history and the decisions that you make and also trauma and the fact that you know manipulation was pretty commonplace yeah it's pretty brutal i don't really know how to end this video i'll be completely honest because i feel like i just shit on <laughs> everyone's favorite book <laughs> Oh man, I was really hoping that when I read Babel, I would do a review or something and I'd be like, oh my gosh, this book is so amazing, like everyone says, and I'm sitting over here like, ugh, <laughs> I didn't like it very much. It was hard to pick up and I skimmed through most of it, I will say, because when I was reading it, a lot of times it was like just continuously following this, the theme of either colonization or you know, the use of drugs to man manipulate a population, things like that. And I would just skip because I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I know how this goes and whatever. Like I, I skimmed, I skimmed a lot of this book. So maybe I did miss a lot of really important plot points, but I don't think I did because, you know, I, I would, I would stop to like read more of it. And then I just, I felt like no matter where I skipped into the book, it didn't matter. <sighs> anyway, I hope, you know, if you read this book, please let me know if you loved it, if you didn't like it so much, I'm sorry. I wish that we could all love all the same books, but that's just not how the world works. Everyone has their own tastes and preferences, and unfortunately, this one wasn't for me. But I, again, everyone who read this book, I hope you loved it. It is a very good book, just not, not for me. <laughs> All right, well, on that sad note, <laughs> I hope you guys all have a great rest of your week, day, whatever it is, and I will see you next time. Bye.